My name is Vincent Urapetsu Murewang. I am an investment advisor by profession and currently serving as the advisory services manager at Kiwell. I'm also a global shaper. I'm a member of the Habarung Hub and the Global Shapers community is an initiative of the World Economic Forum. We've just heard from the Finance Minister regarding the budget speech uh, for the year 2020-2021 and obviously as a young person and as a representative of the youth from the Global Shapers, um, we have a couple of you know, uh, things that we've observed regarding the budget. From a youth perspective, the top highlights that we've seen uh, firstly, that the recurrent budget continues to increase. Now, if you look at the recurrent budget, which basically means the amount of money that is being spent on day-to-day -day activities and running of the government, you'll notice that there are four specific areas that the budget addresses. It's education, it's defense and justice, it's local government, and it's health. Now, as a young person, uh, when I look at the budget and I see that most of the money is being spent on these things, it paints a, a very dire picture about what is happening on the ground. So just to put it into context for you, if you have a household and there's a man and a woman that are married, if you take a look at their budget um, and you see that they allocate a lot of resources to water, that means they have a high water bill. If they allocate a lot of resources to food, that could mean that there's a lot of people staying in the house. If they allocate a lot of money to, towards health bills, that could mean that the situation um, at home in terms of health uh, is a bad one. So when you look at our budget and the amount of money that has been spent towards these areas, you can see that the, there's a problem. The first one is education. We spend 20%, almost 20% on, on, on you know, education. Now this means upskilling of our people, however, um, it, 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 the picture on the ground generally says that despite the fact that we're educating our people, the quality of the education and the output uh, of the money that we spend isn't that good. Uh, this is why there's a lot of educated people out there um, that are certificated but however are still unemployed or are unable to use that information and leverage it in order to create uh, you know, uh, businesses etc etc. So spending does not necessarily equal you know, the output at the end of the day. The next area of spending that we have seen as, 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 as an identified is defense and justice. The recurrent budget spending on you know, defense and justice getting uh, the second highest allocation just generally means that you know, we're trying to strengthen our courts, we're trying to strengthen our military, we're trying to strengthen policing, um, etc, etc. Now this is all good and well, but generally then I would uh, still say that as a young person it means that you know, to me, the government is generally responding to the situation on the ground. High unemployment means increases in levels of crime and therefore the, the need for a better justice system and things like that. Uh, save for the need to protect the people uh, in the country through you know, the military and um, other such law enforcement agencies. So for us as young people, we see that you know, the government is actually responding to the problems that are on the ground, um, albeit uh, you know, inefficiently and uh, perhaps I'll touch on the inefficiencies that exist. The second area is health and healthcare, where the most affected, uh, you know, by HIV, AIDS and other non-communicable diseases, therefore it only makes sense that a chunk of the budget will go towards those things. And then lastly, it's local government, the way you talk about, you know, social protection programs as well as um, other uh, uh, local government, you know, uh, um, expenses that come with it, basically uh, rural development uh, and other things like that. So, uh, like I said, if you look at these four areas, then you can see that it's necessary that the government spends on these areas. Okay. So, then what becomes the problem? If you look at the way that our budget is structured, the current budget is way more than uh, the development budget. Okay. So the way that we use money um, is actually the problem in all these scenarios that I've just painted. We have very, very high inefficiencies in the way that we use money and this comes from the inefficiencies of our institutions, our weak institutions. In Botswana, our revenue to GDP is close to 20%. When you look at non-tax revenues, it's close to 20%. Now, this is only because of our diamonds, because obviously we sell diamonds and people are able to pay us back. If you look at our tax revenues, however, it's 
12 percent 12.2 percent uh, of the GDP that's the, the, the general ratio okay so that means that our tax collection systems are so inefficient and this denies us the opportunity to have the money that can be used to address the problems that we as young people have uh, in this particular in, uh, country this denies us the opportunity as young people or as citizens of the country uh, to, to, to be afforded that opportunity to, you know, to, to use, utilize these resources because generally we always decry about a lack of funding or a lack of resources. Looking further into the issues of uh, inefficiency, if you look at Botswana as a country and you take one of the most you know, improved countries in Africa, which is Rwanda, we have double the GDP of Rwanda. We are at 17.8 billion, whereas Rwanda sits at about 9 billion. They have a more aggressive you know, growth in terms of uh, economic growth at 8%, 9%, whereas we're on a bit lower than that. Right? But however, because of the weakness of our institutions, we have a lot of income that is leaking from you know, the, um, our state coffers, and therefore we're unable to do some of the things that we really uh, you know, would like to do. When you look at uh, our government revenues in terms of trend, you will notice that in the long term, our general revenues are on a decline. And that just speaks to you know, the weakness of our institutions in terms of collection and therefore ultimately meaning that we do not have enough cash you know, to be able to uh, you know, do things that we want to do. Um, furthermore, um, inefficiencies exist in, in many other institutions throughout the country. For instance, there's a statistic that says 14% of Zabana, you know, reaches its intended beneficiaries. So whether it's losses due to expiry or you know, uh, you know, elders eating tabana or uh, that's supposed to be you know, given to the kids, things like that. Um, that's generally there for the government waste the money. So we're not collecting enough money, that's the, the picture that I've just painted for you. But furthermore, we're wasting money. The minister also complained about the procurement system that on average government pays higher than the market rate to procure goods that they need and services as well that they need you know to operate and, and try and develop the country so this denies people that are supposed to be intended beneficiaries of goods and services uh, the opportunity to utilize those because money runs out a bit more quickly the last thing that i would like to say regarding job creation and unemployment reduction in this country is that we are happy as young people that at least the government in their rhetoric and when they speak are starting to recognize that SMEs are quite important in eliminating unemployment. In many countries, SMEs are the biggest employers as compared to the big corporations combined. So therefore, certain initiatives that we've heard, such as citizen economic empowerment policy, although it should be law, uh, the policies is a welcome development in that regard. The review of state-owned enterprises uh, and the restructuring of state-owned enterprises in, in trying to support uh, SME development, we think that that is a welcome uh, development generally. We're also happy about the refocus on agriculture and manufacturing. Uh, we're happy about the rhetoric behind quotas being reserved for contracts and subcontracts for citizens especially. Uh, we're happy about you know, the, the tourism uh, sector and that there's at least something being done to address uh, this particular issue of you know, having a lot of foreigners running the, the tourism industry and not necessarily um, the youth and young people and citizens um, of this country. So generally, um, what we would like to see in terms of um, uh, going into the future, like in terms of implementation is, like I've mentioned, the problem is inefficiency. So whereas uh, the money is there and we can see, and it's clear that there's a lot of inefficiency. So uh, the only way to do that, that the government should do is prioritize uh, at least three things. The first one, they should cut uh, uh, spending, wasteful spending, if I may put it like that, on projects that you know end up not getting us anywhere, white elephant projects, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and refocus uh, their, their, their expenditure uh, towards you know more efficient processes and systems that actually end up helping young people and creating jobs. Um, the second thing is improve the efficiency of their collection systems because as technology advances you're going to end up getting a lot of capital flight from the country. Um, you know, technology such as Uber, if they show up in the country, all I have to do is download an app and automatically I'm a taxi driver and I'm sending money outside the country um, and there's no tax, sort of tax um, um, laws to even address that particular development. Right? The last thing would be 
for the government to cut the size of the public service because generally that is where the, uh, most of the current budget goes towards the um, services that come from the government itself. So you cut government spend, you cut uh, sorry the size of the government, um, but you also improve budget utilization um, as it stands. So the inefficiencies that exist in the government um, are generally what will prevent the current budget that has been allocated from uh, being utilized in the proper way and uh, are Botswana benefiting from the particular budget. So um, that is our perspective as a global shape because we think that we're on the right track, um, but we need to improve our implementation, we need to improve utilization of budgets, and we need to improve our efficiencies. Thank you. That's it.